welcome to my kitchen. I am so excited that I decided to make a YouTube video. This is actually my second YouTube video. My first one is still posted. I probably was going to delete it, but yeah, you can watch it if you really want to. Yeah. Um, I have to eat gluten free. So I thought what better way than to share my gluten wheat, gluten free challenges. I make a powdered mix, a self rising powdered mix that I can use on the fly and I store it and it keeps probably three, four weeks easily, if not more. Uh, I use my favorite basic flour, which is the King Arthur flour. And then I, here are the ingredients if you would like to see the ingredients. I'll put a link in case you want to use that link to purchase it if you've never tried it before. So this is just the plain equivalent flour and it's cup for cup. The ratio that I make for this is also good for self-rising regular flour. So I haven't found a difference. I can't eat it, but it still works the same ratio. So it's basically two cups of flour, and then every cup you put two tablespoons of baking powder, not soda, baking powder, and then you can store it and have it ready to use whenever you need it. So I am going to head and measure it out. If you have to have gluten-free, then you very well know that it can be really, really expensive to purchase the self-rising flour. Even this is a expensive, but this is the most value that I found compared to the other ones that I found. Okay, it's zeroed out right now. Let's put it on the milliliter thingy, the, the metric system. <laughs> it's 136 to make one cup, and then two cups is 272. You can do it the old school way if you really want to. But I found lately measuring is much better and precise when you're cooking. If you go by all the air and stuff, I know I can tap it now and I know that, but it, it is incredible the variances that you get if you don't measure or do the weight. You just do the plain measuring. And it's frustrating when something you make once is really, really good and you're like, yummy. And then the next time you make it, you go, what went wrong? Okay, there's just a pinch in there too much. I will step two seconds behind me to get a spoon. Uh -huh. I'm lucky I have a pretty big kitchen for being in a condo, so if I disappear until I get new camera stuff, so I can be caught at every single angle. <laughs> there we go, 272, we did it. And I left that cup in there good. I like leaving that cup in there for some reason. I think it's just it's convenient to have a cup in there and you don't have to keep washing it. You just, anyways. So we're done with the flour. Now I'm going to add the baking powder. So let me take this off. I could be brave and just do it that way or add it to it, but. So we're gonna look for, we're gonna zero it first. We're gonna look for 30 milliliters to add to that. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. One, one eight. Oh, 30, 60. Why is that so, that's crazy. Oh. the baking powder thing I had my you can hear my dog in the background he thinks he's hungry it's two hours before dinner isn't that normal with animals they always think it's dinner time or breakfast time they wake you up all the time anyways so for the baking powder we need basically four tablespoons to go in there which each tablespoon is 15 milliliters so I'm gonna put my cup on there it's at 99 so let's zero that out and let's go for it so we got so that would be 60. We're looking for 60 here. 29, really? Went backwards. And it just takes a little bit. I go a little bit slow. I just made something so I'm a little bit powdery already. <laughs> and I'm just making an extra batch of this because I am on vacation this week and I want to make sure I have enough 
going back to work. I like to be well stocked the first week back. So I just mix them all together, put them all in there together. So, woo, yeah, that's fun. Um, I also make sure I didn't chip anything. That's the last thing we need is glass in there. Nope, everything's good. Nothing going on there. So I actually saw somebody do this and put it in a bag. You can do it in the bag and then shake it. You just want to keep shaking it. So the powder, baking powder and the flour get together. A bag is good too. I might try that next time. And then you got Ziplocs. I just like bowls because you can easily just rinse them out in hot soapy water and let them dry. And they're ready to go for the next time. So this is my basic ingredients for self-rising flour. Sometimes you need more than two cups. I do have bigger bowls that you can do. So there's that one. I'm going to step away for two moments again. Oh, you can see me good. <laughs> Going along here, stuffing it out. Actually, why don't we do this? I don't want the flour in the milk powder. And I'm going to do the milk next. milk powder because you try to prevent cross-contamination because you never know you might end up with the most delicious dish in the world and never understand how you got it or you might end up with a total flop because you have just a little flour inside your heavy cream so let's put that there now with heavy cream basically this is what I'm doing I'm doing two cups of water with the two cups of cream powder I buy liquid heavy cream but if you look at the ingredients of it look at all those ingredients in there just saying so powdered cream guess what it lasts longer so if i don't drink that whole thing in like a week or use it for baking in a whole week i'm kind of going eh, i wasted my money but this plain cream love it no brainer and I'm not, I, I know that the liquid one, they have to do some of that for preserving and to keep it creamy and not have things settle and all that stuff. I, I just like to have one ingredient, if possible. And this is two cups, so I'm going to actually be making what is called one, um, I'm sorry, two cup, two ingredient biscuits. So mine is basically four ingredients because I'm gluten free and I choose to do the powdered cream instead of liquid cream. So I already measured out two cups of water, which isn't hard to do with liquid. Liquid is nice that way. Oh, you know what? I'm going to wait on that. We're going to wait on that only because I don't want my liquid to have the powder stick as it goes down. So I'm going to, I think if I can turn it on, it's going to be at zero with this on there. Okay. So then a half a cup, we're on the kilo thingies. Kilo milliliter, I think that's what confused me when I was a kid the most, is you had kilos and and then we have pounds and we have ounces and I'm like, <laughs> you know. And now there's new math. I can't imagine trying to keep everything straight with new math. I guess it's to teach you to think a little differently. So, oh, this one didn't, okay, let's zero it. That's what would cause that trauma. Okay, so we're at zero again. And being one cup, we want 136. I'm getting good at this, 136. You could also make just one cup of this and, and just see how much you um, go through or need. I just know I'm making my two cup thingy, so it'll be delicious. I'm probably gonna do that tomorrow. I'm gonna try to get my niece involved with it because I get to watch my niece tomorrow and see if she wants to help. If not, it'll be me again, just me. Oh. Okay, that is weird. All right, let's try this again. See? One cup. Okay. Put this 
on there. Put this on there. See, that's what is going on. So we're at zero. Let's try to do two big scoops and see what's happening. As, the, as kind of a variant. So there's one. <laughs> see, I said new math. This is what happened. And I'm probably leaving this because I want everyone to see it, you know? Baking and cooking, come on. It's, it's a little fun. You gotta have some little... And I'm, I'm kind of new at this weighing stuff. I just started recently doing the weighing, so it is a little bit fun. But your end product usually turns out better or more consistent. Sometimes you'll have one batch where you're just like, I don't want that batch to finish. Why didn't I make two? And then you try it, make it again, and it's like, oh, this turned out different. So this is 136. I guess. Oh, you know what? That makes sense. <laughs> I, I just realized I was correct the first time, and I just was seeing. Whoa. So I got that in there. So we're going to take my little dusty fun away. on there. I thought I saw it. I guess it doesn't. So I like using these jars because they seal. I've tried to put them in like a one of these and shake it. One of the taller ones. That was a disaster. That was kind of fun. Um, I have these with the plastic lid. They're not waterproof. They'll go all over on you. So yeah, I made um, fire cider and you're supposed to shake them. And yeah, no. No, 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 no. That didn't turn well. So with this being... I just mixed it. I think it, it says two. No, this one doesn't say it. Um, I usually like to put it in there and before I use it in the refrigerator for about four hours minimum. And see, I can blow through this amount. This isn't that much. I can blow through this amount in a week. Whereas this, it's a little challenging. This is what, $8.99? And I want to say this was $11.99 or $12.99. So, it just, and most of the time I'm barely finishing that. I mean, I have to, free, sometimes I freeze it and then I make up kind of like a butter out of it. Maybe we'll cover that. Oh, yeah. So, that's it. You have my two basic ingredients. I can also make a mini pizza. I can make my two ingredient biscuits now because, well, I'm all prepped and ready to go. And many many more things that we can make with these two things and i'm excited to get started it might take some fun little oopses and i hope i entertain you in certain ways i teach you and i hope i take you away from the rest of the world for a few moments have a great day